We're talking about the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Uh, why are you here? What's the purpose of our existence? And we've been talking especially about the kind of problem you face if you have become addicted to alcohol. If you have become addicted to alcohol and decide to stop drinking, you find an impossible series or network of responses that have been created in your personality that seem to you almost permanent. You determine that you will not have another drink, and yet your whole emotional and physical makeup have become so used to alcohol and the relaxation and the pacification and the apparent freedom that it gives you from worry and anxiety that you see that your own personality is your own worst enemy. It seems as if your personality has become suited and fitted to operate on alcohol. Uh, just the way an automobile will... Uh, operate only on certain kinds of gasoline or petrol, so it seems to you that your personality has become so used to alcohol that it cannot operate any other way. And so you often think to yourself, if I could only change this personality, if I could change the very chemical makeup of my blood, if I could have a whole new body and a whole new mind and a whole new set of emotions, then perhaps I could have done with this alcohol. Of course, it's the same with any addiction, even if it's an addiction to heroin, or if it's an addiction to crack, or if it's an addiction to opium, or if it's an addiction, actually, strangely enough, to bad temper, or to anger, or to resentment. It seems that when you determine to stop doing the thing that you decide is not right for you, you discover that your whole personality seems to be bent so in the direction of that particular vice that you feel the only way you can possibly do what you think is right is if you can check in this personality and check out a new one completely. And that's the particular problem that we've been discussing. And what we've been saying, of course, is that the creator who made you and there is a creator who made you. Your personality didn't come about by chance. You know that uh, things that are much less ordered and complex than your personality require an intelligent mind to produce them. So how much more does your personality require a personable mind to produce it? And uh, the creator, when he conceived of your existence determined that he wanted you to be able to share the greatest thing that he knows. And the greatest thing he knows, of course, according to his own revelation of himself to us through his son, is love. And he may determine to make you capable of love. But the only people who are capable of love is people with free wills. And so he knew that he had to make you with a free will, and he did that. The moment, of course, he knew that he had to make you with a free will, he knew that you could use that free will to choose to live as if he didn't exist. And once you did that, you would begin to create all kinds of complicated networks in your personality, such as we just discussed. It would create in you attitudes of mind and emotions that would be filled with frustration as you tried to get from other people what you were originally meant to get from him, it would fill you with all kinds of complexes and all kinds of twists and crooked ways in your personality as you tried to get from the world the kind of security that you could only get from him alone. He knew that he had made you for the love of an infinite person who is infinitely wonderful. And as you tried to make do with the love of an ordinary human being in place of that, he knew that it would create all kinds of attitudes and responses in your personality that would be filled with frustration and filled with dissatisfaction and would require all kinds of perversions, both sexual and emotional, in order to try to fill the gap. And immediately he conceived of that. 
he conceived of the need to remake you completely. And this is what he did. This is what an old book called the Bible says that he did. It says that there was a lamb that was slain from before the foundation of the world. And that lamb, of course, was his son, Jesus. And another verse in that Bible says that Christ died for all, therefore all died. And in fact, what God the Creator did was he conceived that you would choose to live without him, that you would choose to go your own way, that you would, as a result, pervert your personality and twist it to the point where the only way you could be free to do what you felt you should do and what you thought was right to do is if he actually destroyed that personality and recreated it anew and that's what he did in his son in a cosmic miracle in the midst of infinity and in timelessness he recreated you and remade you new so that he sent you into this world with two personalities in a sense really only one but he sent you with the ghost of the old one still alive that's the one that you have when you try to stop drinking. That's the one that you have when you stop trying to, when you stop the sexual perversion that you're involved in. That's the one that you have when you try to stop being bad tempered. He allowed that one to live in you and continue to exist so that you would see the consequences of that choice. But he also created a new one in his son. In timeless eternity, your old self was crucified with him. And that timeless beautiful, pure, and perfect personality is available to you, and that's the real one that actually does exist. What we've been talking about is how that personality is made existent in this present life. And, of course, the amazing thing is that you either need a time machine, such as H.G. Wells, that can actually bring eternity into the midst of time, or that can bring the miracle that occurred in the first century on the cross at Calvary, or that occurred millions of years before that in timeless eternity, you need a time machine that will bring that into this present time, or you need some power that will do it supernaturally. And that is what the Creator has provided. There is a power in this life that is given the name of Spirit. And it is called often the Holy Spirit because it brings a holiness into your life. And this Holy Spirit is God himself. It's the creator himself. It's the infinite being himself. And this Holy Spirit is able to take the miracle that God created before he even made the world, the miracle whereby he renewed you completely in a son and remade you and destroyed that old self-nature. And this Holy Spirit is able to take that miracle and bring it into time right here in this present generation, in this present century, in this present day. And it's this Holy Spirit that does that miraculously. So you're right if you say, well, whatever he did in the first century, I can't have it in my own life today because I'm in time here in the 20th century and he did this back 20 years ago, 20, 100 years ago. And if you're right, he actually did it millions of years before that. How do I bring that into my life? You don't. But he has provided a power or a dynamic. It's actually a person. The Holy Spirit is actually a person. It's the third person of the Godhead. And he is able to take that miracle that God wrought in his son Jesus in you, and he's able to bring this into your life today as you sit in this car at, that mo at this moment, as you sit in your room at this very moment, as you sit in your office chair and look out through that window, the Holy Spirit is able to make real in you this tremendous deliverance that the Creator worked for you in His Son. In fact, He made you twice. He made you, first of all, with a free will, and then He foresaw what you would use that free will to do uh, to pervert your own personality, and He took that perverted personality and He remade it in His Son, and then He made available the Holy Spirit who is able to actualize that cosmic miracle in your personal life at this very moment. What does he need you to do in order that he should do that? You need to want it. You need to be willing for it. And you need to begin to respect the Holy Spirit.
and to ask him to make this effective in you. If you do that, he will change you this very moment. Let's talk a little more tomorrow.